This month, we have decided to celebrate the Feast of the Conversion of St. Paul. In Paul's letter to the Galatians, chapter 1, verses 11 to 17, we read, Did I not see Jesus the Lord? In the end, he appeared even to me. It was like an abnormal birth. I had persecuted the children of God and tried to destroy it. But then he called me through his grace, chose to reveal his son to me, and through me that I might proclaim him among the Gentiles. The conversion is told in no less than three separate passages in the Acts of the Apostles. Chapter 9, verses 1 to 9, chapter 22, verses 6 to 11, and chapter 26, verses 12 to 20. A voice was the normal method of learning of the divine will. Adam heard a voice. St. Augustine heard a voice. Joan of Arc heard several. For Paul, from the moment he came into contact with Christ, he was so overpowered by his influence that he never again had any other desire than to be a relentless disciple of Christ to the world. Without Paul's letters and missionary work, the Christian history of the West would never have the same impact and success. Paul felt transfigured all the time. The life I now live is not my life, but the life which Christ lives in me. The kind of revelation that Paul experienced is rare, but through prayer, meditation, and reflecting on the Scriptures, we can all empathise with Paul and say with him, the life I now live is not my life, but the life which Christ lives in me. The world now needs those kinds of disciples, men and women who will be active in bringing Christ's kingdom to our families, our friends, our schools, our confreres at work, in our sports teams and social gatherings. Let us proclaim Christ. Few artists have attempted to capture the moment of Paul's conversion, but for me, the most dramatic is the painting by Caravaggio created in 1601 and to be seen in the Sarazzi Chapel of Santa Maria del Popolo in Rome. He concentrates on the immediate aftermath of Paul being thrown off his horse. The light shines on the torso and face of Paul and the flank of the horse. The man holding the reins of the horse is in shadow. The raised hoof of the horse could easily stamp on Paul. Paul's eyes are closed, and his arms point upwards, both in adoration, ecstasy, and prayer. There is no fear in his face, rather reacting to his vision of Christ. His life will ever be changed 
by this incident? Has the Lord touched us in our lives? How have we responded? Have we become active disciples? Do we openly profess our faith in Christ? Let us be bold and fearless like Paul. Let us ask him to inspire us. Meditate on this scene. What do you see?